hey y'all happy sunday welcome back to the vlog um how y'all been doing how y'all week how is your week listen i'm glad to be here and i'm glad to talk to y'all again so let's get into this recap of the shy season three episode eight y'all so this episode, I know everyone is probably going to think like, oh man, this episode wasn't eventful. Um, however, it was very eventful. I had to actually watch it twice because the first time I watched it, I felt the same way. I felt that this episode was not as eventful as the three previous episodes where I felt like we were the... It, um, the season was starting to take off and we were actually starting to get some real action going on so i was like uh you know so this one i'm not saying that it's still continuing to take off i think that we've kind of like plateaued or what what is the word <laughs> like we're, we're just we're keeping where we're at right now i don't think that we've gone down in um this season or anything you know so um let's just get into it so first of all i was really wondering what was going to happen in this episode when i seen that the name of the episode is the um french room so i was like hmm, french room that's a chicago term you know and i love that L lena I wanted to call her Nina. I love that Lena named the episode The French Room because it is a Chicago term. You know, she's definitely keeping the theme of Chicago alive. And um, I was kind of wondering what was going to happen with this episode because the description of the episode said that Keisha was going to be facing some things, some troubles and trials, you know, with her recovery. So I was like, well, The French Room is basically a front room of a, a house or a flat or what have you so i'm like what is it you know maybe she's not going to come out of the house maybe she's going to be stuck in the living room or something like that so it was surprising to see that actually nina was the one who occupied the front room throughout this entire episode and i kind of knew that it was going to be something about someone being in the front room because in the beginning of the um, of this episode we see Jess, Kevin, and Nina, all the family dragging them. We see that their apartment or their flat. We see that uh, in the beginning of the episode. So I kind of knew that it was gonna. This episode was gonna be a slow episode. It was gonna take place mostly inside of the house, which was fine by me. So, um. Keisha is home and right off the bat, she notices, she comes in her room and she notices that some things have been misplaced and Dre and Nina give an excuse, which if you watch the show, you know that it was some emphasis there on, oh, if some things are out of place, it's because we cleaned up before you came back. So when I noticed that um, the show or whoever edited it put the emphasis on that part, I knew that, um the truth was going to come out. I was like, oh, the truth was going to come out about this some kind of way. <laughs> some kind of way. That's going to be the messy part of this episode. If y'all didn't pick up on that, I just knew it. But yeah, um, they do lie about the things being misplaced. And Kevin's, right off the bat, Kevin is feeling the stress of Keisha being home. So Keisha coming home, now Keisha has brought her energy along with her. So her energy is misplaced right now she doesn't know who she is she's still going through the motions of being um captivated and held captive by omari she actually they reveal in this episode that she actually did in fact kill omari but she doesn't believe that she's killed omari so she's dealing with the fact that she's actually taken a life that she's no longer who she is that she's a new person she's got to find out who this new identity is and come to terms with everything that has happened and also see where her place is within the family and how she's going to um recover basically recover from all of this and kevin he wants to just kind of it seems like he wants for her to get some therapy. He wants her to take the steps, okay? You know, when he killed somebody, he went and got therapy. He hashed it out with his friends, with his family, with his mom, and he moved on, and now he is a he's definitely a different person. Kevin don't play. Kevin be like, what was said? Because we can handle it. 
<laughs> okay? Kevin does not play. So Kevin wants that same for his sister. You know, he wants for her to um, get better. But um, in this episode, we see that Keisha had only been home for three days. So I'm like, yeah, maybe he's uh, rushing it just a tad bit, you know? Um, but yeah, um, I did feel like he may, may be rushing it just a tad bit. She just got home. But you, we also have to understand everyone's position from this whole incident. It did not only affect Keisha, it affected the whole it affected the whole community it affected her whole family so kevin also has some stress and trauma built up from this um event along with nina nina also reveals in this episode that she has been has gone through so something like this you know like i mentioned that i had gone through you know this is a me too for me i had a similar um the incident happened to myself so me watching this i kind of sided with Nina and the way that she's handling things where she wants to just take baby steps and she's not really putting too much pressure on Keisha versus Kevin who has not been through something like this and he can't really he can't relate you can't relate Dre neither Dre can't relate but y'all I was hard on Dre on my last recap on this recap I am back in love with Dre I love the strength that she is bringing to the family, that, that she is holding everything together. She's doing what she can do, what she knows to do to hold this together, even though she can't relate either. And I love the fact that Lena wrote this in a way where Dre could not relate to this and she had not been in this circumstance before. It wasn't a me too thing for her because I can't stand when people say that oh you're gay because you were mistreated by men uh you know even though that in nina's instance i'm not saying she's gay because she was mistreated by some you know molested by a family member but um you know someone can say that for her and people like to say that and that is not always the case people have their sexual preference and that is that on that but i just love that um, it was written in a way where that is not her excuse or her reasoning because it's excuse what that's not her reasoning for um, her sexual preference so I really did like that and um, as far as Kevin being able to cope with all of this you know he, like I said he can't relate but he still has some trauma that he needs to go through so in actuality the whole family would benefit from going um, to therapy therapy for everything that has happened. But yeah, um, Nina does share that she has gone through it and she does try to like uh, baby Keisha, kind of let Keisha do whatever because Nina also is feeling guilty. You know, Nina went through this herself. She must have been a child and um, or I'm, we didn't really get into Nina's uh situation and how her um molestation or what happened to her we didn't get into that hi royalty y'all royalty wants to say hi but she's not dressed why 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 did you do that hmm y'all know what i'm gonna let her say hi anyway she has oatmeal on her face she got food on her face but hey i'm a I'm somebody's mama. I'm filming at home, and it is what it is. Say hi, baby. Say hi so you can go bye-bye. Say hi. You got doggy? What does doggy say? Woof, woof. Woof, woof. Yes. Doggy says roof. Okay, bye-bye. So, um, back to what I was saying. Uh, what was I saying? But, yeah, Nina shares that she has had a situation like this, so... And Nina also shares that she never really recovered from her situation. So it is this this happening to Keisha um, should help Nina also seek recovery and some help and counseling for the things that happened to her. And thank God that they have Dre there to help them through because Dre is being that that presence that needs to be there. You know, um, of course she's not a man, but I feel like she's taking the role um uh, given that masculine energy that strength that protector that provider you know that professor you know there and um 
I could really appreciate it. You know, it's it's something that's needed at this time, and it's good that she has it. So we also learned that um, Keisha lost her scholarship, y'all. That was a little heartbreaking. I was like, wow. So, you know, she already feels like she's lost so much, and now she has lost her scholarship. And I was kind of like... You know, she was upset about it, but then I was thinking, like, before she didn't really know if she wanted to actually accept the scholarship, if she wanted to go to um, to college. And now she's like, you know what, I just can't wait to get out of this place. Now she wants to escape this place. So, you know, she's going through um, her, her, her the motions, you know. And then we also have Keisha's friend come over. How did y'all feel about her friend coming over and saying what, whatever her friend said? The most I got out of that conversation was that Keisha was real secretive. And I felt the same way. In one of my recaps, I mentioned that maybe if Keisha had not uh, had let her friends know a little bit more about where she was going, what she was doing, you know. I always tell my daughter to let me know where you're going. Let somebody know where you're going, period. Send your location. And that's pretty much what her friend told her you were always so secretive and then nina was listening at the door and overheard that she uh keisha had been sleeping with the track coach and all that stuff but nina is so worn out and so just happy to have her home she don't even bring that up like that's just it don't even matter no more like <laughs> you know she's not even stressing about those type of things but Y'all, in this episode, y'all know I love me some Papa, but Papa was doing the most. The most in this episode. When he gave Keisha that money back, I was so mad. I was like, now is not the time, Papa. I know he was a little bit high because Kevin and them was in there smoking, but boy, come on now. You know, I, Papa, why did you... Yeah, when, okay, so when Papa gave that money back, I was like, Papa, what are you, what are you doing? And why do you have this money on you? Like, why do you have exactly all the tips that Amari gave you on you? And I knew Amari was the one that was at the pizza place. Y'all, we already knew that, but let's keep it moving. So, I absolutely adore that Jada and Emmett stopped by, like, it made me feel like, yes, there's a community here. The community cares. They coming together. They brought some food. Like, that is so me. I would bring, I'm coming over with food and things like that. So, I really like that part. I was like, oh, they brought some food and, you know, they're concerned and they stopped by. And I felt like that was really, that was a really kind gesture. And it was the right thing to do at the time you know every she jada understood that the whole family is struggling let me go over and bring some food because at times like these people lose appetites people aren't really taking care of themselves they can fall into a depression and it's just really a high stress situation she knows that they have they still have cab there that they need to take care of let me bring them some food let me go check on them she's also a social worker so she can also lend so a helping hand someone outside of Keisha's immediate circle that can give her some guidance and help and um, help her with her recovery so I really appreciated Jada bringing the food over thank you girl <laughs> I did. I was like, oh, I love that. And then, um, so, did y'all peep how Keisha welcomed Emmett into her room? She Keisha welcomed her friend into her room, but when Keisha welcomed Emmett in her room, I kind of felt like, did she welcome him in her room because, you know, Keisha's father died. So is now Keisha needing to have the presence of a male? Like, is that what she need? needs right now is that the reason why she let um Emmett in her room or is that the reason why she slept with the track coach is it because that she needs to feel that male presence you know and, and that father figure type is it a daddy issue type of thing but it, either way she let Emmett in her room Emmett um and her have a great conversation you know Emmett gets her to laugh which is a, a good thing she needs to laugh you know after everything she's been through but y'all, Emmett tells uh, Keisha that he slept with Dominique, and Dominique um, and slept with Dom. And Keisha asks, "Do you love her?" And I was like, "Hmm, like, what's love got to do with it?" He slept with, he slept with Dom, and Emmett says, "I don't think I love her. I just think that we have a 
there but there is some type of connection there and i'm just like it's yes the connection is lust i knew y'all was gonna have sex and um keisha says well what is you gonna do when tip finds out because tip is a good girl and i'm just like when did this girl become a good girl when you know like i'm all here for him and tips Emmett and tips relationship but when did she become such this good person like when y'all like are we forgetting all the other episodes when she was talking to Emmett crazy when she was dealing with that other dude that was doing beating up on Emmett when she left Emmett jr when she left the baby with Emmett and dip for like two weeks when she was doing whatever when did this girl become such a good girl but hmm okay so um i just i just don't speaking of um Emmett have a smashing dime why did jake ask kevin did he have sex with Gemma yet <laughs> Y'all, and I love these three. I love their characters because they stick to character. Lena got them sticking to their character, honey, okay? Because um, Jake is like, you ain't smashed her yet? And I'm trying to figure out because I heard rich girls is freaks and I want to know. So I'm just, I'm cracking up because the answer that Kevin gave was basically like, mind your business. Like, and then, you know, you got Papa tuning in like, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with waiting. And I... <laughs> And I just love that Kevin stuck to his character. He didn't side with Papa and what Papa said that, you know, Pop, how Papa feels and his opinions and his views. And he didn't say anything to Jake except for mind your business. You know, he didn't side with Jake either. He stuck with who he is. And that's been Kevin throughout this whole season. Kevin rarely went against who he was. Like, I, I never, I can't recall a time where he was some following someone that he wasn't now jake has a few times you know he he's influenced by the people that he he's around duda and also his brother reg he was influenced by them but kev not so much so i thought that was really cute and um yeah so what else is going on uh and also when kevin says that he wants to kill um omari <laughs> And, uh, yeah, when he said he wanted to kill Omar, speaking of them keeping to their, true to their character, Kevin was like, man, I just want to kill him. Y'all know Kevin the killer. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin didn't pull the trigger. Well, Kevin, he didn't, he didn't kill, um, uh, Ronnie. He just shot him. So, Kevin, he got it in him, though. Like, I, I, I know I just said he a killer, but he got it in him. He ain't kill nobody. But he said he, he said he had killed Omari and I was like yo he's our you know he's already dead so I was just like laughing because uh Jake's response was just hilarious Jake was like say less and then Kevin was like look bruh I said I, I I'm speaking hypothetically do not show up in my house with an AK-47 because y'all know y'all know you know y'all know uh <laughs> he the one that gave um Jake is the one that gave Kevin the gun the first time. So, Jake, Jake be with it. Jake was like, say less. Okay? You want to take him out? Let's do it. And then, um, yeah. And then Keisha. Keisha is still struggling. Keisha is struggling because she killed um, Amari. And she's like, you know, she's still like, did I really kill him? And, she, you know, she's reading articles and newspaper prints that says that he's dead and she's still asking people like is he dead and even when Keisha spoke with Ronnie and she told Ronnie like you know I should I be feeling a certain way that I killed him and I was just sitting there thinking like girl in my opinion you lucky you lucky you killed him we are all so lucky that we can just kill who who hurts us you know so um that that you know and she killed him and she doesn't have to it looks like she's not gonna have to pay any consequence because she she hasn't been locked up it was i just feel like she's lucky that in that instant she was able to kill her because i if i if it was me i would have killed him too if i could have killed my uh abductor i would have please believe um but um 
Let's see. So Jada also tells her Me Too story. And her story is that she was molested by someone in the family, which is, it's just like, I was just so upset. Like, you know, like when, um, Kev gets upset when they're all sitting at the table having having a little bit of food and Kev gets upset and tells Keisha how he really feels. I wasn't mad at him because he needs to get that off his chest. She needed to hear that. Um, her mom needed to hear, Nina needed to hear what Keisha had to say. Why didn't you come get me? Why didn't you protect me? She needed to hear that. And then um, the thing is, is like, y'all didn't lost my train of thought. Hold on. When Jada tells her story, it's just like so tragic that these things happen. And like I said, when Kevin told Keisha, well, maybe you shouldn't have been wearing this. No, you know, that's maybe that's how he felt. Everybody could have played a role in what could and should have, could have, should have, would have been done. But ultimately, if that guy wasn't a creep, this wouldn't have happened. Now would have, have it. Okay. You know, because I still feel some feelings about my mom. Like, why would you send me with someone that you knew was a was a rapist? Why would you do it? Why would you do it? So, you know, I put some of that blame on her. And that's the same thing that Keisha does with her, her uh, mom. She's like, why you didn't protect me? And it's just like, ultimately, at the end of the day, if that guy was not the predator that he is, this would not have happened and that's just the end of the story but y'all um it's just really sad that there are guys out guys and women there's women that do it too it's really sad that there are people out there that do these things that prey on people and it's just like it's just sick and it was hurtful to hear that um it happened to so many people in this story you know it on this show it was hurtful that it happened to so many people in this story and um uh yeah so i kind of i was kind of sitting there watching it almost almost reliving my whole episode with um things that happened to me and then at the end of the episode ronnie actually um ronnie comes over because Keisha invites him over and I was kind of because I was reliving what happened to me I was kind of mad at Ronnie for some reason I was in my feelings y'all I was like <laughs> Ronnie you know like when he came over I was and he said that well before he said that Keisha gave him meaning to his life I was just thinking like you know you did all this for Keisha, but why couldn't you do this for Tracy? Why couldn't you do this for Jason? Hell, why couldn't you do it for Miss Ethel? Why couldn't you be all that you could be for yourself? Okay, why did it have to take all of this, all of this, in order for you to um, find yourself, in order for you to feel s some worth for yourself, you know? I was kind of feeling that way about... Um, about Ronnie but then at the end of the episode when that song the music came on that um gospel song came on I kind of my feelings led up for him and I say well you know what at least Ronnie found who he is and he found some meaning to his life while he's still alive because you know it's never too late it's never too late and um you know I I did digress at the end and I was like at least at least he's found some redemption and um that's good you know at least he found out who he is and he can finally have some peace with with everything that he's gone through in life and if it took all of this so be it but yeah y'all um this episode was it was a good one all in all and um yeah it's been real Thank you so much for watching. Y'all be easy. Until next time, peace.